Hi everyone and welcome to Atmospheres um, here at Alexander Heath Contemporary Gallery. I'm here to give you a little walk through to see all of the work um, that's come together from all over the world. Um, so I'll go ahead and start over here. Okay, so here's Alexander Heath Contemporary here in Roanoke, Virginia. It's a beautiful day. have the show lit so that the hallway is a bit of a, a passageway to what I like to think of as kind of the belly of the whale. Um, a sort of interior space where paintings can be seen. Uh, it's, it's kind of a square space. I'll just give you an overview here. the show is atmospheres the idea being that all of these artists embrace the idea of air in their paintings um, all the colors are tied together so that each painting is its own world start here with Elise Schweitzer's painting um, I love the point of views of each painting this one in particular uh, it's a real aerial view as if you're a bird and you're flying over uh, a vast expanse of land. You'll notice in a lot of these paintings there's a real sense of monumentality. The concept of the picture really takes up the whole picture plane. So the bird is flying over the fields and it sees this large mountain, to me, symbolizes aspiration, the ideal. This is Clara Hord's work. You can see the humid air of, of England. This is one of my pieces, a small window. So the bird has flown over, seen the mountain, going over the fields, and is now descending into a green valley of thought. Here's Ronit Goldschmidt's palm trees. Conrad Frankel's landscape. Martin Geiger's painting from Mount Gretna. Claire Horde's Valley. You notice this wall is all very green and lush. It's, to me, it sort of symbolizes a descent from the mountain into a sort of valley of lush thought. Let me progress onto this back wall here to Jonathan Becker's work. We've kind of descended from the valley of thought into this sort of dark interiority. Uh, intense introspection. There's the painting by Conrad Frankel. You can almost smell the smoke from that fire. And the variety of, of texture in the paint, so visceral. We move on to Alana Hagler's painting. I believe this is uh, Hampstead Lake. To me, it feels very interior, even though it's, it's a, a landscape. Um, you can sort of see how this line of the cloud in the sky and in the in the water creates a sort of oval shape um, where the eye can kind of enter in and swim in the water under those 
these like circles. And then there's these wonderful lights. Um, you'll notice that each one is just a little bit different. It's tailor-made. There's so much love in this painting. This is one of my works. It's a, I call it Hut. Um, it's a painting from a playground. I was thinking about Rothko and taking up all of the space in the picture, playing with the edges and the vibrations. This is another, another Yonatan Becker work. I think he similarly takes up a lot of space in his painting. There's a monumentality even though the painting is rather small. Something about this large, important building at night um, to me feels very dreamlike and interior and contemplative. You'll also notice there's some lovely texture in this work. I believe he adds plaster to some of his paint. I don't know if he did that for this one, but. This is a, uh, she used to be Lena Zer, and now she's Lena Chermoshniuk. Sorry if I didn't pronounce that correctly. Um, I believe this is called View from the Garden. Again, a real monumentality to the work. I love this small slice of sky at the top and the sensitivity of the lines between the sky and the, and the buildings. Yeah, her work feels very concrete to me. So our bird flew over the hills to the mountains, descended into the valley, went into the belly of the whale to dark interior midnight thoughts and is slowly ascending back up the hill. This is a Conrad Frankel piece. You can notice the, the shadow encroaching on the light. Claire Horde, you can see our bird is ascending. even more. This is another Elise Schweitzer painting. Notice the green of her sky against those amazing blue mountains. Her paint is so luscious. And now we're really soaring in the sky. This is a Ronit Goldschmidt painting. I believe it's gouache. I feel like our, in this uh, picture, our bird is turned into an airplane. He's soaring over the bowl of the valley. He's transcended the interior thoughts. And is seeing a, a bird's eye view, sort of a blissfulness to this painting. I love the bowl-like feeling of this painting. Sort of arena where the space is sort of the hallowed concept. Elise Schweitzer. I love her variety of edges. It's a wonderful little building. So our bird is still flying high in the sky and then coming back down again a bit into the architecture. This is a Conrad Frankel piece.
and then Alina Chermoshniuk piece. So our bird has flown down into the architecture, back into Maya. This is one of my paintings, I call it Shed. To me, it's about coming all the way down to the ground. It's full frontal. And then the bird ascends again. This is a Martin Geiger piece. Look at the sky, guys. <laughs> and the light. Okay, I'm gonna walk you through one more time. So you can get the whole, whole feeling. No sky, just the evidence of it. One of my favorite paintings ever made. So special. Monte Serrate in uh, Tivita Castellana, Italy. This horizon line, how it just disappears and reappears. makes me think of the apostles at the end time for some reason. They're all sort of these vertical witnesses. Again, Martin Geiger and his sense of light. Abstract, the light sort of abstracts everything and brings it to a higher plane of reality. One without labels. Look at these fingerprints. So human. Full of care. It's almost a sculptural feeling to it. This repetition leading leading us in. This tree. Almost like the thing around which everything rotates. Sort of this interior space.
Look how many colors are in that. <laughs> sort of geometric shapes in the night. It's almost as if the night has its own architecture. The night sky does, I guess that's what I mean. This window. These organic forms. This brilliant green, this brilliant purple. These dark spaces within the dark. These clouds really feel like they're in the sky. This sort of cavernous feeling and this blissful, airy feeling all in one painting. And I'm sort of a sucker for three trees, something about it. These three. <laughs> And this purple, the blue, and the green. They're almost the same color as the sky, but not. It's perfect blue sky. Now oh, it fades to just a little lighter on the side. All these trees crowned with light, sort of a silvery light. The feeling of sky in this peach color, it's all the same light. way, the road, and the house all sort of lean into this composition. There's a tension where it goes this way and this way, and it's all crowned by this deep blue sky. Look at that blue. You can see the blue of the sky even in the shadows. This crisp line, this soft line.
is a shed of a person who died last year. Really vibrant, amazing person. Could see her presence uh, left in the house she lived in, in the shed in her backyard. But her body was gone. Thanks for coming on a tour with me.